Well, we finally got there. We're uh, about to put the Series 1 engine back together. And you probably noticed I've got it sling, slung off the hoist. Um, why not just do it all on the engine stand like that would be a lot easier, wouldn't it? Well, indeed it would. But to put a timing chain on this, there's a little bit of a procedure. And this is why that spring was so important. I needed that little tiny spring that I showed you in the last video to go in the uh, relief valve for the tensioner. The tensioner is spring loaded but it also receives hydraulic pressure to keep this, the, the tensioner in, in line with the, not in line but in tension with the, the chain and then once, it, once the chain wears in a little bit it'll jump onto the next bit of the ratchet so the, the oil relief valve there was, was pretty important so oil didn't drain back, lose its tension and start rattling. But, unlike old Ford Escort engines and mini engines and things like that of our era, these engines are timed differently for the doing, putting a timing chain on. It's not quite the same and I'll explain it a little bit more when we get there. But, these engines work off what's called the exhaust peak. And the exhaust peak uh, the pointer is on the flywheel. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, there it is. There's the pointer and it's on the flywheel. So, I have to put this adapter plate on and the flywheel in order to find out where the crank should be. Then I have to measure the exhaust peak of the uh, first intake valve, uh, first exhaust valve, and then we should be able to find out the correct position to put the chain on. Like I say, in the old days, and the old escorts and minis, you just used to have two dots and you used to line them up and that was it. But not with this. So what I'm going to do is... I've got... Um, I'm going to work off my toolbox here. I'm going to support the engine, lift it onto the toolbox and leave it on the stand. And then... Oh, well, leave it on the, leave it on the hoist. And then put it back on the stand, take off the flywheel again so I can uh, build up the head and things like this. It's a really complicated way of doing things, but I can't think of any other way around it. So we better get on with it, eh? I'll leave the bloody cameras and I'll this bit out. I've put a bit of, uh, well, let's stand back a bit. How's that? Where's my desk? Oh, there it is. I'll put a little bit of uh, bubble wrap on there just to <coughs> make life interesting. Well, that's going to throw the cat amongst the pigeons. There's a four up for the fence. This is, this is going to hold, hold us up a little bit, but not much. I noticed that the um, on here, on this exhaust, once I've got it up in the air, there's no collar, there's only one half of a collar in there. Oh, that's marvellous. And there's no sign of it anywhere. Where the hell could that be? And I guess I haven't got any. That would be too easy, wouldn't it? Ah, oh, bugger. Where could that be? Well, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, when we get it back on the engine stand. But I just noticed that there, that's not good. Where's it gone? Oh, the rest are in. Now 
which is going to be the most popular place to do it? I think, well I can lift, keep lifting it up and down. I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll put the flywheel on first and that'll get us out of a bit of trouble. There, that's the idea. So it's relatively stable. I think I'll do the crank seal at the same time. Because that has to be done. Again, not a very popular or practical, should I say, type of seal on these. No wonder the seal leaked. Rock hard. Damage the, uh, the dowels. Yeah, that is really, really super hard. Let's find the new one. Yeah, these these are a little bit better. They're a bit more pliable. Um, these seals are are a split seal. Not the best idea, but with today's modern technology and sealer, we should be able to clean up that mess and um, make a nice seal with some uh, RTV which wasn't available in the 50s we'll use a bit of acetone to clean it up get that paint off Before we put any sealer on, I'm going to try it. It really is a sort of a, a bad idea. I don't know why they couldn't have sort of made this bit bigger with a big seal on it, but mm, that's the way they've done it. Dowels in the bottom are sticking out further than the dowels at the top. Um, consequently, it won't allow the, the seal to go in. I might have to rectify that with a grinder. <coughs> could I file it? Well, I suppose I could. Get the way you got Yeah. Yeah, that's all it needed, just that little grinding of those pins. Uh, we're uh, 
we're going to naturally test this with a smoke machine before we put the flywheel on. Because <laughs> you know it's going to play. You have to tick it up again. You don't want to do that, do you? Just clean up the boat, get the oil off. It's got lock washers, that, you know, spring washers on, so you shouldn't have to worry about lock tight and things like that. Right, let's get some sealer. Well, what my idea is to put uh, some sealer on the back face, and especially in between these two, fl two flanges here, and then clinch it together to make sure that seal's got to be on, and then put the bolts in. That's how it works in theory, anyway. Right, let's clean that off. Dirty oily residue there. I need to get that off. even though they've put new ones on, because this idea is the same as the six cylinder. Um, yeah. anyway. So we have to do sort of things in a strange order because we've got to put uh, some grease on the seal, yet we want sealer on the seal as well. Um, what can we use? Well, let's think of something. This is the same stuff we're using for the uh, TDI subs. It is made of rubber, so in theory it should clinch together fine. I've got a little bit of red grease down here. I'm just going to put a little bit of grease in the in the seal itself so it's not touching our sealer. So when it starts, it's got some lubrication there. So we'll put this one up here. So just in case you didn't see it because I had my back to the camera, I just went round progressively around the bolts and just nipped them up a little bit. And now with our super spanners, we're just going to go around them and make sure that they're evenly tight. Right, that's that done. So the next thing, I think what we'll do while I'm here and while I remember on, I'll put the car plugs in because I'll probably put the housing on and forget all about it. So what we need is a wire brush. What we're doing is just, when we painted this, we've got paint on the inside and a bit of rust that's stuck to the paint. So 
So there's the car plugs, and this is sleeve retainer. We always use this, it makes a nice tight fit. Now, are these going to be the same size as my insertion tool? Or the thing the TBI? Nothing would surprise me more. I think I'll trim a bit off. Right, there we go. It's a nice fit. Um, when you're putting car plugs in, don't hit them on the edge. Hit them in the middle like this. And then they'll make a nice tight fit because that allows this exterior to expand. So that's good. So just a little bit of uh, thread lock, uh, not thread lock, but uh, sleeve retainer. And those will guarantee not to leak. Just make sure we're all nice and even. Right, where's that cover? This is the bad boy, isn't it? Now we don't want too many bolts in here because it doesn't need to, for now for setting the timing up. Won't need much at all. The nice thing about this is I had plenty of time to clean up all the bits and pieces. There must be a bracket goes in there. Those bolts are too long. And that's another thing. You, you just... Uh, forget, where all, forget where all the bits are. They're too long. They're too long. Oh, they're up there. So we want put more in. We want some shorter ones. I wonder if I should put this camera over here. Because like I say, I'm continuously uh, on the other side. There's a plug here for the camshaft. We might as well put a, a new washer on there because we've got one. Right, the next thing, you've got to fit the hardware. Again, just temporary. Can't see the pin. No, you still there. Again, temporary. Now, I'll move the camera again so you can see what's going on. You should be able to see quite clearly what our original problem was. There is an arrow here 
and we have to turn the flywheel until it gets to the exhaust peak. Where it is. I did mark it with some marker. Up, oh, there's top dead centre. Where's the exhaust peak? Oh, it's over here. See, this is the problem. There is the exhaust peak. I put it with some marker, but the mark is actually here. So I'm going to clean that up a bit. Yeah. I don't know if that's helpful for you to see, but the, the line is on exhaust peak. Maybe a hair of that way. That's it, that's on exhaust peak. So now we can go to the front of the engine and uh, continue with the mayhem there. So what I'm going to do is, well, no, I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll lift it up and spin it round. That would be better, wouldn't it? And now we can have a look at this bad boy. I wonder if I should put the camera just a little bit to one side. Because I'm, I'm certainly not doing this again. And we can see what the problem is. Um, the key is actually here, on this side. So it, although it's set at exhaust peak, the key's here. It's not on the crank. And, there, and another thing is I've, I've sort of tapped down this nut here, so I'm going to have to readjust it again. But the, the old days used to have a pinpoint, uh, like a pop here, or a pop here, and a pop mark there. You used to put a straight edge between the two, bang your belt on, Bob's your uncle down the pub. This is completely different. Now let me try and explain. The camshaft we set up to exhaust peak on here. So we're going to get our DTI out and work out where the peak is. That's another little section we're going to do. Once we do that, we can put the chain on this side here and make sure it's tight. If it isn't tight on exhaust peak here and exhaust peak on the valve we can take the front off the cam, the, the sprocket off here and turn it because this is like a vernier cam we can turn it and there's three, three separate keywords in there so we can actually get it within a third of a tooth so we can take it off, put it back on again try the chain. It's a mess about but this engine has got some pop marks here and it's also got a pop mark here has it been done before? we don't know, with a bit of luck across our fingers we might be able to put a new chain on with the old settings and it should work so we've got this one set up to EP let's get the valve set up 